So today we continue with the miracle work and the miracle work is uh, centered around the chapter one of A Course in Miracles. So this is the third episode of that and it is called Miracles and Revelation. You see it over here too, like Miracles and Revelation. And this is a uh, very interesting part of the of the first chapter because the miracle principles and the expressions uh, say uh, that having to deal with um, revelation are mixed together and um, yeah it's lovely to use it that way too because it is it is supporting one another so the revelation readiness becoming ready to receive revelation is uh, really what the last part of the chapter is about. And um, so I want to bring in an, uh, an idea from from the teacher's manual first. Um, so it's it's about knowing where you actually have to deal with here, knowing what is actually the power that is in you and uh, say starting to trust that or putting your faith in it but trusting that um, and that's described in the teacher's manual in the characteristics of the teachers of god in in the first uh, part of that and which is trust and um, you might be familiar with it it's a, it's a great um, thing to read so i'm reading it from the big book um i have to look it up first but um I actually could yeah let let me pull it up from the from the um uh, pdf here then you can read with me that's probably easier so it's a great start because it's good to be reminded of the idea of trust all the time um since that's one of the things that everything is based on. What are the characteristics of God's teachers? The service traits of God's teachers are not all alike. Not at all alike. Not at all. The service, tra service traits of God's teachers are not at all alike. They do not look alike to, uh, to the body's eyes like you're not looking the same at all as God's teachers. There are lots of differences. They come from vastly different backgrounds, like immensely different backgrounds. If we would compare them today, it would be interesting to see how that, how that actually is. Their experiences of the world vary greatly and their superficial personalities are quite distinct nor at the beginning stages of their functioning as God's teachers have they yet acquired the deeper characteristics that will establish them as what they are. So one of the characteristics then becomes this, is one of the characteristics that will be re present in everyone is this. So I'm only using the first uh, two, yeah, the, on the first two uh, paragraphs of this trust so that's one of the characteristics of God's teachers which is you in your recognition of your true function so this is the foundation on which their ability to fulfill their function rests perception is the result of learning in fact perception is learning because cause and effect are never separated the teachers of god have trust in the world because they have learned it is not governed by the laws the world made up okay the teachers of god have trust in the world because they have learned it is not governed by the laws the world made up it is governed by a power which is in them but not of them it is the, this power that keeps all things safe. It is through this power that the teachers of God look on a forgiven world. So 
So this is this is really beautiful. The teachers of God have trust in the world because they have learned it is not governed by the laws the world made up. It is governed by a power which is in them, but not of them. It is this power that keeps all things safe. So this is the comforting, say, phrase, the comforting idea today. It's like, you see a world, you appear to be in a world, and you trust this world as a teacher of God, because it is not made by the laws of men. You look straight through it to see the laws of God in them reflected, the laws of love. So that's why you're, you feel safe in it. And that's why you look on a forgiven world. It is not what man would tell you that it is. It is through this power that the teachers of God look on a forgiven world. So when this power has once been experienced, it is impossible to trust one's own petty strength again. And this is the sentence that I really would love to bring in too. Who would attempt to fly with the tiny wings of a sparrow when the mighty power of an eagle has been given them? And who would place his faith in the shabby offerings of the ego when the gifts of God are laid before him? What is it that induces them to make the shift? Okay, so there are certain successions of um, phases where you go through. We're not going to get into that today. But this is good. Like when this power has once been experienced, it is impossible to trust one's own pity strength again like why would you fly with the tiny wings of a sparrow when the mighty power of an eagle has been given you like why would you choose for littleness in other words so i shared it stop the sharing of this so why would you say trust your own ideas instead of seeing with vision to a world that is forgiven to a world of love instead of conflict and hatred and all this so this is a good start <laughs> this is a good start because so with with the miracles with revelation it is in fact you already took the turn you already you already uh, decided or was the decision was already made for you to not look with the human eyes to everything anymore, but to look with vision to everything and see a forgiven world. So that is um, that is what we share today in the miracles and revelation part of the chapter. So the, why do I bring in the trust part? Well, the trust part is is really the recognition of yourself that you already have decided for a different way of looking at everything so it's like you're on the path there's no way of turning back or anything no you're moving into it's like um, a way that is going to be harmonious a way in which you wait whether you see conflict or not you wait until vision comes back to your perception so to speak when vision comes back to you and you feel say the love of forgiveness uh, running through you um, as an as a basic um, as the basis you could say the basis of your functioning here in this world you don't want to come from another place than from love like those days are over that you do that that you lash out or that you think that you need your right or that you think that somebody can be separate of you that you can be better off of someone like comparisons or uh, an analyzing situations in order to to see how well you're doing and despite others you know the, we cannot look at uh, our world anymore like this so that's why uh, miracles and revelations is coming in into our awareness literally coming into our perspective and um, 
it's lovely to see. It's like even in the first chapter of A Course in Miracles, if you if you're able to say to move through the first chapter and, tr and trying to um, get in touch with it, what it is actually telling you, that would be like an amazing step. You know, then the rest of A Course in Miracles is is easy to go through because um, all was already in the beginning, like literally all healing and communicative devices that are available are exposed in the first chapter. What I mean with that is this is like the the new ways of communicating um, as as a new you um, say are being practiced and being exposed and being shown to you in the first chapter. So with that, if you apply what it says, if you start to literally like use what it says, and then you have a miraculous healing capacity that becomes yours. You know what I'm saying? It's like then the whole book, then the whole Course in Miracles is going to be so much fun to go through because you recognize immediately um, everything is confirming what you have read and have, say, recognized in yourself in the first chapter. So then it becomes so easy to, to see how, um, how you can stay and come back again all the time to, to your recognition of the truth of who you are. So that's my little introduction here um, to, to what we're going to go through. Now there's, um, I think, probably eight or nine sheets with, um, say, statements and miracle principles, statements related to revelation. So you, you see that these are always words representing something else like they're symbols of symbols so they don't directly represent what what this is about and so in order to receive it it takes it takes a moment or it takes a, a miracle in a sense to to hear it what is being shared and so it is not about the words is what i'm saying so the, the words are going to do something with you they yeah they point in the direction in you by becoming receptive to to get what this says um, it is already a miraculous occurrence in itself that that's occurring uh, and that's really the offering that i'm doing here like it would be of no use to just read it as a concept so um, that emphasizes again then the incredible healing uh, power capacity of what is being shared and exposing of uh, communicative devices things that you will apply in order to to see the communication that is uh, going on in this instant as we speak well that's a good stretch <laughs> that's a good stretch for your consciousness so yeah let's just let's just uh, do this <laughs> uh, it's great i love to um to build it up in that sense because it is never enough like you not that you're lacking anything but it's more like you want to receive all of this as your individual experience of yourself which is really where the benefit is like to receive this for yourself is to give it away to everyone so this is really where this is for so miracles and revelation oh yeah remember the point about miracles as a means of organizing different levels of consciousness yeah we've been through this before i remember that it's like but remember the point about miracles as a means of organizing different levels of consciousness like you want to have that so clear so that's why we go th repeat this just and bring this back in miracles 
come from the below conscious or subconscious level. So they come from, from down under, so to speak, and um, come into your consciousness. And this is interesting. So I'm not going to explain that, but it will come back in, in the miracle principles that we're going to read. So miracles come from the below conscious or subconscious level. Revelations come from the above conscious level. So the supraconscious level. Revelations come from the above conscious level into our consciousness. If the identification is with the body, consciousness may distort superconscious impulses by denying their source and seeking their impact in the orgasm. So we're getting ourselves into um, the real stuff, so to speak, like the, the real passion um, character of your relationship with everything that is. So in that sense, it's, it's serious or it's, you know, these forces running through you. And these all represent not what you thought they were representing. In other words, the passion that you feel, the absolute, say, um, ecstasy, that you can experience, you translated it as a bodily activity, for instance, as uh, sex and orgasm, or, um, you know, it's like, this is a, a distortion of the superconscious impulses. So it's not, it has not body related whatsoever. And you know this too, and, and you might even have that as a focus in your physical activities to go beyond the body and having a super conscious impulse coming to you while trying to look for that through the body. So I'm, I'm just sp uh, spelling this out for you. It's like if the identification is with the body, consciousness may distort super conscious impulses by denying their source. So that may happen. It doesn't mean that it happens all the time. It may happen. But what I'm actually trying to convey here is, is the intensity and uh, uh, say the ecstasy of the uh, experiences that we're dealing with, that were like, it is the pure life energy that you are, that's running through your system, running through your, um, through your being because that's literally where you are made of. It is what you are. So that's why it's it's really important to, to get this straight in a sense, but also to, to see um, on what field, you could say, on what field the experiences are taking place. Like they have to do with your gut, so to speak, with, with the depth of your being, with all of you like the part where you say completely lose any kind of boundaries in the sense of um, your communication is completely open in communicating with God. So with the revelation, uh, say the revelation comparison, you could say that is the same, that is the same thing. We will come to that in a moment. That is the same, um, intensity. Revelations induce a complete but temporary suspension of doubt and fear. And that's so great. You know, if just for a moment you lose all doubt and fear. In other words, you enter into a total certainty a total certainty that God loves you like a total certainty that God loves you um, okay so the next sentence I'll take that 
immediately too. It should be noted that they involve an extremely personal sense of close, uh, closeness to creation, which man tries to find in sexual relationships. This confusion is responsible for the depression and fear which are often associated with sex. Sex is often associated with lack of love, but revelation is purely a love experience. Physical closeness cannot achieve this. So I put this all on one sheet, so just to have it all like clear here. So revelations induce complete but temporary, temporary suspension of doubt and fear. So I'm going to stop right here, there, so like this. It's like physical closeness cannot achieve that. And, and it's, um, say the revelation uh, comes to you in a moment, just whether that's working out for you or not, you're, you're just receiving it. Um, I always use my example of a an, an very intense revelation I had in, in, uh, when I came back from the United States uh, after living there for 10 years, entering back into uh, Europe uh, in Dublin airport. I have two hours of delay of, of stepping over into of transit into the next plane. And one thing happens and that is suddenly I have a revelation of the love of God so intensely that I uh, literally um, say fall apart <laughs> right in the middle of an airport. So it it is like it can happen anywhere. It can happen at any moment. It it is given you, and uh, if you still need to catch a plane, you might be lucky to get it too. Uh, I achieved that. <laughs> But what I mean to say is like it is it can happen anywhere at any time. It is it is a moment of suspending of doubt and fears like it lifts you completely out of any insecurity and just it's like just diving deeply into the feeling of complete connectedness in total certainty, total trust and total. Yeah completedness, fulfillment, gratitude, grace, you name it. It's like just for a moment that happens. So that's, you could say that's a life changing experience. Suddenly you feel the power of flying with the wings, like flying with the power of an eagle instead of the wings of a sparrow. And there's nothing that can compare with it. So in looking for that totality of experience, you might try to look for it in sexual relationships. You might try to, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, very common and very like, yeah, sure, you're, you can still look for that. I'm not going to take any of that away from you. It is just in physical relationships, it does not work that complete, like no matter how great your experiences are. And, and it's not to compete with it or to take anything away, like I said, but it is, it has to do with, no, your, your say desire, your desire for a, a totally and completely, um, say full on experience of uh, total love is, completely appropriate that is where you feel alive absolutely it's like where else or how else are you going to experience that then when it's taking literally every part of you uh, communicating with every aspect of creation who wouldn't want that like you know that that has everything to do with you you know that it's that total that might also be your like hesitance to dive into an experience or to dive into uh, surrendering to God or letting yourself be impregnated with light and love so completely that it disrupts your whole being. You know, this, of course, I understand. 
like I understand. But see your desire, and this is coming from really deep, you could say, like it's a, a really deep um, desire, heart's desire, soul's desire, to have that complete reunion inside yourself with everything um, that is absolutely absolutely so that's the beauty and the passion that you recognize yourself to be that's where you feel alive and wherever you try to look for it and when it isn't complete it is also not really say um, satisfying in that sense it is not completely fulfilling you while there is an opportunity to have that fulfillment be complete you know this is you will end up experiencing that anyway it's like you can postpone it or you can um, say translate it into a different form that isn't completely whole but why not having a whole experience of that that is totally life-changing and, and takes away all fear and doubt and brings you into total certainty no matter where you are where you go whatever whenever that's occurring so this is what we talk about with the idea of revelation all right so thanks for um, putting up with me in this it's really beautiful Okay, so you can always read this again. I, can, I made a PDF of it too. If you want to receive that, just write it in the comments or email me or whatever. And I will send it to you. The revelation unites souls directly with God. The revelation unites souls directly with God. The miracle unites souls directly with each other. See, and, uh, see, there's a horizontal, you could say, a, a parallel in this. So you could say this is the miracle geometry. So there are two parallels here that are actually one. Like the two parallel lines meeting in, in eternity. A revelation unites souls directly with God. Well, that's one vertical line. The miracle unites souls directly with each other. So that's the nature of the miracle. It is inter, it is with your brother, recognizing your common source. Okay, so the deeper levels of his subconscious always contain the impulse to miracles, but he's free to fill its superficial levels which are closer to consciousness with the impulses of this world and to identify himself with them. Okay, so deeper levels of his consciousness always contain the impulse of the miracle. Like that is a deeper layer in yourself, in your consciousness. It's a deeper level. But on the superficial level of your consciousness, there's always which are closer to consciousness, like which you can bring in easily, have always to do with the impulses of the world. So this is continuously in your awakening, continuously coming back to you, whether you pick up an impulse, a miracle impulse, or whether you pick up an impulse of this world, which are closer to your consciousness, like easy to grab, so to speak, or easy to um, yeah, we, we translate this too in listening to the voice, like the voice is quiet, the world is screaming. So where are you going to listen to? That's what this is about. Like you, the deeper levels are quiet. The impulse of the miracles right here. So they can be brought into your consciousness too, by your decision. If you already take something from this world, your consciousness is filled with that, with the impulses of the world. And you identify yourself with it until you learn to, to wait a moment and to go a little deeper, to listen. And it's like, 
no, 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 I don't want the world's response to this. I don't want the world's impulses to come into my consciousness. It's like, this is what we do in the, in the, in the mind training, in fact. You say, like, my meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. So whatever I perceive in this world is not going to do it for me in this moment. I'm, I'm letting it go. I'm letting this pass by as the clouds in the sky. And wait for the miracle impulse to come to me, you know, which, is an, which is a direct uh, unity with, with your brother, with other souls whether they are present or not whether they seem to be physically next to you or not it doesn't matter because that was another temptation to think that there's such thing as a separation or thinking that there's different locations and times miracles are a way of earning release from fear now it's like, is this an exchange? Miracles are a way of earning release from fear. Yeah, so the, the earning then is your investment in letting the impulses, miracle impulses come into your consciousness. It's something you will have to learn. Like that's a way of earning release from fear. That is a, a definite choice not to be, say, not to be ruled by the impulses of the world but by the miracle impulses and that will release the fear because a miracle is an expression of love you know that makes so much sense doesn't it like miracles are an expression a natural expression of love you will see that probably too in one of the expressions here revelations induce a state in which fear has already been abolished so it's like it's almost like you're being knocked off your horse so you're already knocked off your horse <laughs> if we speak in in um, in soul to paul expression uh, soul chasing the christians on his on his horse i can see it in, in front of me it's like soul chasing the Christians suddenly is knocked off his horse and has a revelation like he's not afraid to fall off his horse he's already down suddenly he's blinded by the light of direct communication with God it's like hearing a voice telling him it's like why are you why are you say persecuting me why are you doing that well this is a beautiful say analogy with what we're actually reading. So the revelation is a direct experience of God, like a direct communication with God, where fear is already abolished. So if you see it as, okay, yes, I already am knocked off my horse, and now I'm vulnerable, receptive, and boom, there it is. There's the revelation coming to me. You see that that's uh, different then. So the miracle is, is in fact uh, allowing the miracle impulse to come into your awareness is really like allowing love to rule your consciousness instead of the worldly impulses that is always uh, competitive conflictual and limited so allowing making the choice for the miracle to come to you is already a, a choice for love that's why this is a course in love in in a sense like it's a course in, of love uh, it is um, learning to release fear which means like releasing fear means letting go of the impulses of the world um, letting go of your temptation to think that there's something separate from you see how great that is it's like so beautiful to see it like this because it, this is actually the way that it's functioning <laughs> i love this 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 is so clear it's lovely miracles are thus a means a means uh, to come into a fearless experience of yourself and revelations are an end it's like it's a direct way 
to completely to be in a total communication with your creator miracles is a means to to recognize that there is nothing to fear and that love rules your consciousness if you allow that and in this sense they work together so the revelation readiness is at least like well you have to get used to bringing miracle impulses into your consciousness you allow that to occur you allow fear to be say undone in your consciousness by bringing in expressions of love like moments of love experiences of love where you're not stopping yourself like not controlling yourself with ideas about limitation about um, say worldly laws revelation is intensely personal and they're actually not translatable into conscious content at all so this is totally true it's like revelation is an intensely personal uh, experience and it's actually not translatable into conscious content at all like there's no way you can express what happens so you can uh, say create an image like we, I just did with um, Saul being knocked off his horse and receiving an, say a, a lightning storm into his into his being with a direct communication with God that's an image like that does not tell you how personal it was to Saul well for Saul you could say you could see it like the fruition of that experience was that he never chased a Christian but he started to teach the truth and with so much um, say with so much certainty that nothing could imprison him anymore whether he was in prison or not it really doesn't matter it didn't matter to him anymore because he had the touch of this he was he was directly communicating with his creator in that state fear is already abolished it's gone in other words it was a total love experience well a total love experience is not something you're going to forget it's like it's no you have a total recognition of yourself that is the great part what happens yeah this is awesome so i'm getting really excited about this <laughs> yeah see that's this is also so great um revelation induces only experience revelation induces only experience that's all like it's a pure direct experience of total love no fear no doubt total certainty complete uh, fulfillment so miracles on the other hand induce interpersonal action you know interpersonal action Miracles, on the other hand, induce interpersonal action. In the end, these are more useful in our stage of learning, or in our phase of learning. These are more useful because of their impersonal nature. Like, now, what is so impersonal about this? Well, see, the, the miracle is, an, um, is a moment in which, say, fear is abolished uh, which fear is being uh, fear has been taken out of the equation you could say since we're into the mathematics of miracles so they induce an interpersonal action but they have an impersonal nature like it has nothing to do with the other guy it has nothing to do with the other person no it's a recognition of your divine love that you recognize and that you say share together in that moment like that is that is the power of it 
it is a moment in which you both let not the uh, say the laws of the world impose on your consciousness now you you let go of this fear suddenly you have nothing to lose um, in recognition of each other and of god and that's why it's impersonal you literally let go of your identification and come into an uh, experience of union of unity that's why it's impersonal in this phase of learning working miracles is more valuable because freedom from fear cannot be thrust upon the experience cannot last so it's like you have to practice this because it will come back over and over and over it's like in as long as you perceive yourself uh, as um, say as being in a world uh, having moments in which you experience love suddenly coming back into fear having a fearful idea coming to you 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 have to it's like come back to the lower say the subconscious level in which you allow the miracle impulse to come into your awareness instead of the worldly impulse that frightened the heck out of you it's like that was so scary to you for just a moment but now you're not responding to that it's like we're not solving that problem wait a minute no i have a miracle mind i can i can literally allow the miracle impulse to come into my awareness so that's why this is more helpful in this phase of learning that we find ourselves so the miracle is really what this uh, training is about and that's why there's a course in miracles like if that if that um, curriculum is complete if you if you say are in a um, say in a stage in which you actually are directly communing um, communicating with god all the time then there's no need for miracles anymore they they lose their say their function but up to that point now see now you gotta you gotta be honest with yourself it's like well just take a look at it i don't know if you still experience fear or um, things that appear to you as scary or threatening or you find yourself defending yourself against something if this occurs miracles is really your your work terrain so to speak this is this is your area where you're going to say develop an expertise in a miracle mindedness and miracle healing if you want it's like you're going to develop that so well um, in order to come into a revelatory state of mind and uh, which doesn't know about fear which doesn't know about anything but the total love of god so it's like then all the symbols of the world are dissolving too it's like yeah you recognize them you can use them in your whatever you want to share but in fact you're directly communicating with your creator um, so a beautiful example if you want of a revelatory mind that doesn't know of fear uh, is when you listen to master teacher like what he is saying is has nothing to do with what you think it is about uh, so there's a direct experience uh, related to it where he is teaching from so that that's beautiful as to see that as an example so because it has it is completely open like it's not afraid of anything it is not holding back it is not defending it is not doing any of these say human things or worldly things it is not interested in that at all because it doesn't see it it's literally like not seeing that at the same time it can see you um, in anything that you hold on to so that's why the the healing that can take place uh, yeah you could say like the healing that can take place that's being offered continuously then in this meeting too it's like the healing that's continuously being offered to you is one of this it's like there's a, a miracle healing opportunity in every situation 
and we're not going to miss any of that like you you want to train yourself and become in receiving that in all your affairs and every time that you see that you fall into the trap of of um, fear of defense and defensiveness of uh, rejection of separation of um, hate of conflict so then you stop right there You're not doing anything with that we we said that the other day too it's like you put your total faith in in fact in the miracle impulse that will come into your consciousness if you give it space now, if you give space in your mind for that to happen so that love can rule your mind again and you extend from there becoming revelation ready because if your mind is clear and open you are able to receive revelation but that's not of your uh, say it's not of your control it's not you um, deciding when that's going to happen and same with the miracle so the other day we had the instruction of before you perform a miracle before you allow this change to occur, ask me if, if this is the right time to do that. It's like, am I, am I supposed to say perform a miracle here? Something is coming to me. Am I supposed to, it's like, should I be performing this miracle? That is, that is always under Christ's control. It's like he decides for you whether that's necessary of for you or not so this is uh, the, your daily practice so there's some things to learn in this sense so there's some th new habits to create and um, one response to this world is not letting yourself be uh, confused by the worldly laws or the worldly ideas coming back to your miracle impulse receptiveness to your miracle mindedness in this phase of learning, working miracles is more valuable because freedom from fear cannot be thrust upon you. Like you have to develop that yourself. It's like Jesus cannot take away the fear out of your mind. But you can ask for uh, miracles. You can ask for, you can allow yourself to release fear. Miracles praise God through men. They praise God by honoring his creations and affirming their perfection. Oh, that's so beautiful. So it's like miracles praise God through men. So it's an interpersonal activity, but recognizing the impersonal nature of you, which is your perfection and that of your brother at the same time. So this is not anymore a comparison, which would make it personal. No, it's impersonal. So it's not about you and I have it and you don't. No, it's like I recognize that in you as well as me. And that praises God because he created you like that. They heal. Oops, sorry. They heal because they deny body identification. They heal because they deny body identification and affirm soul identification. See this deeper layer, this deeper miracle layer, subconscious level. They heal because they deny body identification and affirm soul identification. By perceiving the spirit, they adjust the levels and see them in proper alignment. The dove has landed on your head. By perceiving the spirit, they adjust the levels and see them in proper alignment. This places spirit at the center, where souls can communicate directly. Ah, so this is this is alchemy in a certain sense. This is like so um, uh, mystical in that sense. Like by perceiving the spirit, they adjust the levels and see them in proper alignment. This places the spirit at the center, 
where the souls can communicate directly. So you come into a soul communication. The soul is always in direct communication with God. Suddenly that aligns, you could say, and uh, you start to become part of this direct communication in your consciousness. Christ inspires all miracles, which are really essentially intercessions. They intercede for man's holiness and make them holy. They place man beyond the physical laws, like the worldly laws, and raise them into the sphere of celestial order. In this order, man is perfect. Like you come into your soul communication, the soul doesn't know anything but the perfection of you being you. In this order, man is perfect. So they place man beyond the physical laws, and that's why they heal too. So it's like we're talking about healing capacity and power here. They place you beyond the physical laws. So the physical laws are not, no longer determining you in your miraculous experience of yourself. So you, you're going to start to discover a new you, in other words. A you that is perfect, that is God itself. Christ inspires all miracles, which are re essentially intercessions. They intercede for man's holiness and make him holy. They place man beyond the physical laws and raise him in the, into the sphere of celestial order. In this order, man is perfect. Christ-controlled miracles are part of the atonement. Christ-controlled miracles are part of the atonement, but Christ's guidance is personal and leads to personal salvation. Christ's guidance is personal and leads to personal salvation. Christ controls miracles are part of the atonement, say of the undoing of the Son of Man. Like the undoing of what you think everything is. That's the Christ controlled miracles. So they're part of the atonement because what needs to happen when is up to say is up to the curriculum with a capital C. The Christ controlled of the Christ is the inspirator, so to speak, of that. But Christ guidance is personal and leads to personal salvation. So the impersonal nature of miracles is an essential ingredient because this enables me to control that distribution as I see fit. So it's not you that determines what miracles need to happen. So the impersonal nature, like the not personal choice for the miracle at what time, in what situation, is an essential ingredient because this enables me to control that distribution as I see fit as the atonement itself. Like Jesus of Christ is the atonement itself. Christ's guidance, on the other hand, leads to the highly personal experience of revelation. This is why it involves personal choice. Christ's guidance, on the other hand, leads to highly personal experience of revelation. This is why it involves personal choice. So it's like you decide for this. It's a personal choice to follow the guidance that is given you and not dis, dis it somewhere. It's like, no, you're actually going to accept that. If you accept Christ's guidance, it, it leads to uh, the highly personal experience of revelation, of direct communication with God. This is why it involves personal choice. Okay, so we're getting to the end of this um, part of the book then. And so the great thing that we discovered today is then the organization of this. It's like, okay, there's Christ guidance 
and there's a revelation and and there it's like Christ controlled miracles he's organizing that for you what needs to happen when to whom with whom he he gives that to you it's like it's not your um, your choice no but your miracle mindedness is really essential so that's why we do the mind trainings like that's that's an essential part to become open to to have a choice to choose between miracle impulses or the impulses of the world it's up to you and um, then we have Christ guidance Christ guidance is your way to revelation revelation readiness is to learn to listen to Christ's guidance so how does that work and so the um, the Christ guidance is literally then to to listen to listen to the voice to wait long enough to let that come to you instead of being distracted by the impulses of the world so then we have the the idea of I'm doing this very short just as it's like a summary so then the idea of revelation Christ guidance if you start to listen to this voice it will lead to revelation a direct very per highly personal intense experience of total love a, say fear and doubt abolished altogether yeah, the soul the soul to Paul experience something that will change you forever so once you have experienced this power you will never fly with the with the wings of a sparrow anymore so that's why this little part that I was reading in the beginning is so essential it's like it's it is trust it is not a you could say it's not a development of trust it's trust itself that is literally there for you all right so this is our um, speed up class you could say to to come to apply this use this and really deeply experience this for yourself and and that's why it's so exciting to to share this with you and to give that so thank you for your presence here today and i hope to see you soon thank you so much Thank you.